Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. <laughs> So today, the cooler I'm going to be adding is the Deepcool AK620. There's a few videos out there about the Deepcool AK620, um, and they've all said how great of a cooler it is. So I thought this would be a prime cooler to add to the league. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, as always, I'm going to be throwing the cooler on my um, test bench behind me. Um, it's the, the uh, i7-10700K test bench. So without further ado, let's get on with the install. Once the install is finished, I will give you my thoughts on the install. Then I'll go through the results and give you my final conclusion. So, okay, let's get on with the install. So install wise, it's very very similar to a lot of other coolers of the very similar ilk where you have a back plate with four prongs, you have to line the prongs up with the holes, you poke them through, then you put like nuts on to keep that in place, then you put two bars in place and then the cooler rests on that and they screw into little two little things that come up from the bars. Um, 
The one thing I would say that I was particularly um, surprised about with this cooler when installing it is that and a lot of the times you have real trouble when you place the cooler down of lining the, the screws to the two barbs that stick up and with this I found that when you put it on the actual school, the screws n really rest nice and easy on. So you put one on one side, you put it on the other side, and it, everything rests really nice. And it was so easy to deal with. I was so very, very impressed. So install-wise, I thought it was a really great install. All right. Oh, I've obviously hit a target. But anyway, um, now that I've gone through the install and given my thoughts on that, let's go through the results and have a good look at how the cooler performed. So let's start with base temperatures. The Deepcool AK620 managed to start at a 27 degrees Celsius, which is excellent performance and puts it top of the pile. I don't really put much stock in the base performance, base temperature, but it's a good indicator of what's to come. Base sound. The AK620 started at 34 decibels. You just can't hear a thing out of it. When it first boots up, the GPU makes far more noise than the CPU cooler does. But it's still not quite top of the pile, but it's in the top four, which is an excellent performance. So Cinebench, it finished with an average score of just below 4,850, which is an excellent performance. It finished third in the pile, which is no mean performance. The average max temp, it finished on 62.7 Celsius, which is an absolute amazing result considering the Cinebench scores it got and the really low noise it was generating. So it basically just didn't break a sweat. It kept it at an average of 62.7, which is amazing considering everything. Average max sound. The average sound was 36.8 decibels, which is just basically nothing. I kind of gave it away when I was talking about the uh, average temperature to say it didn't break a sweat. You couldn't hear a thing. You couldn't really notice that much of a change in terms of the RPMs of the fans. It really, under stress, just did not even work up a sweat. So it's no surprise that the sound was so low. The scoring ranges are basically staying the same, no change there. And as you can see, the Deep Cool has finished top of the pile with a score of 34 putting it on its own with the highest score to see to date. I think if the price of this thing was a little bit lower, and keep in mind that I'm basing this on the price that's available on Amazon, which is 60, $66, I think it is. I actually managed to pick this up from Micro Center for $55. So realistically, if I put the $55 in there, I think it would have finished with 35 points, which is just amazing. All right, so with that score in mind, let's get on to my uh, final thoughts and conclusion. All right, so now I've, you've gone through the results, and as you can clearly see, this is a top-notch cooler. It is right up there. As I mentioned in my uh, uh, when I was scoring this, I managed to pick the cooler up for $55, and at $55, it is an absolute steal. If you manage to go and get this cooler and get it from Micro Center, or I think even um, New Agus having an offer on $55, then pick it up. Amazon, unfortunately, is still uh, more expensive than that, but I'm sure they'll bring it down in price with, say, uh, the Black Friday deals or the Cyber Monday deals that are coming up very soon. So it may come down in price to so keep an eye on it. But if you do get it at $55, it is such a good cooler. I was so impressed with the fact that I put it through the stress test and it didn't nah. When I always put the coolers on the test bench after installing, I always put them through a lengthy um, Cinebench R23 test for like 30 minutes and do that several occasions to make sure that the thermal paste is well set in to get a, a consistently good result from the testing. And even when I was stress testing it, it just never got above like 60 odd degrees. It's just nuts how well it performed even through that stress, test, stress testing. So before I actually did my normal R20 test suite, I knew that this was going to be a great cooler. So I kind of had a bit of an insight up front. All right. Um, so, yeah, great cooler. Buy it. Simple as that. I can't say anything more than that. It's top of the league and it's there for a reason. Okay. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be able to find out when I'm going to be adding the next cooler to the Cooler League. If you've got any questions about the cooler um, or if you've got any questions about the video or anything else, put them in the comment section down below. I'll try and reply as soon as I can. And as always, take care.